Um, hello, everybody. Uh, again, I'm Maciek Smugato. Uh, along here with Adam from um, uh, UC Santa Cruz uh, uh, Institute of Genomics. And uh, uh, I don't know. I, some, I tend to intersperse everything I do with photos because I take tons of photos. Um, there's a lot of nice things to photograph around Santa Cruz. Uh, this is us, genomicsucsc.edu. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about all the data, and I'm realizing I'm preaching to the choir here. You, you guys, you guys know this. Everybody's been saying this. Um, it, in a lot of ways, I put this presentation together to kind of ensure that I understand things correctly. So, if you see me wandering off conceptually somewhere, please, please readjust me because I'm trying to have some input on GA4GH, how it's going to incorporate graphs, how it's going to talk about, um, you know, annotations within this context. We, we need to get it right. Um, so. As best as I can make out, we kind of have five types of data. We have the, the reference data that a lot of people are talking about here. Again, within GA4GH, we're mostly talking about just human genome, you know, GRCH38, whatever, but I'm, I'm hearing a lot of different genomes out here with some very interesting things. We have the raw data, the, the reads from the sequencers, RNA-seq, whatever. Um, the kind of processed variants, various annotations coming from that. Um, we have the metadata, which is critical and is just now beginning to get recognition within GA4GH um, that traces the provenance of, of all of the, uh, the, the other data going through the system. Um, and, and finally, we have, I, I think, what's kind of one of the focuses here, which is the, the, the integration of all of this data with knowledge from clinical, um, maybe mobile health tracking, whatever else people want to, want to integrate it with. But the thing is this, I, when when people design systems or uh, a priori, they kind of look at this, this data chart, but I, I think sometimes they forget that, really. Um, the, the size of, of the data are, are <coughs> drastically different. And um, uh, one of the things that I want to get to is maybe we shouldn't be trying to have a single solution to manage all of these different scales of data. So, um, yeah, okay, I, thought, I think I got to the punchline before saying everything else, but here goes. Um, just a quick overview. Um, the reference data, again, for like a typical, um, you know, human genome, whatever, I don't know. Is, is there even as much as a terabyte of data there? Probably not. More? Tons more? No, no, it's, it's small, right? Um, I mean, uh, as, as I think a couple of people said here, as, as we gather more and more um, data, it's going to be growing pretty slowly as, as we add uh, new individuals to it. There's, there's only going to be so much more variation that we can see. Uh, again, shout out to Adam and uh, actually uh, Eric and other people here doing excellent work on, on the graph genome. Um, the reads data. Uh, it's, it's freaking enormous. When, um, when, when I was working on various aspects of, of the, you know, trying to deploy GA4GH servers, the thing that we always get stuck on is, well, yes, how do we get the reads out? People want to see the raw reads. Um, we are trying to architect the system so that it can somehow serve them out in some sane, um, tractable manner because it, it's, it's huge amounts of data and furthermore, it scales up as we do more sequencing. Um, uh, uh, but I get the sense that it's very highly redundant. I mean, most most of the one one person's um, sequencing is going to be kind of similar to another person's sequencing. Gee, we're all human beings. Um, but we do want to retain it for possible reprocessing. I don't know what other kind of uses there are. I'm assuming that uh, maybe we'll have vastly better variant calling pipelines, so we want to keep onto that original data. Um, that's 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 the that's the enormous data part of it. Um, again gets compressed down and variance still grows with the number of samples. I mean, each, each individual has their own variance recorded. That's going to take a certain um, incompressible amount of, of, of data. Um, it, I'm still kind of trying within my mind to, to determine, um, by the time we get to variant data, we've already uh, filtered out possibly the effects of experimental bias, right? I think so. Um, and obviously, it has clinical significance. Um, the metadata is something that I haven't heard as much about, but I know from kind of my other um, run with scientific computing how, how insanely important it is. Um, for, for every datum we have in the system, we, we need to know who it came from, what tissues, what, what possible clinical state annotations, whatever. Um, what sequencing procedure was used, what was the protocol, what lane 
were particular samples on whatever, and then all of the algorithms used to process that data into um, uh, first, uh, um, what is it? Uh, um, boy, uh, reads and variants, basically. Uh, and, 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 and this data is, is really small compared to the other data, but it's absolutely critical. We need to make sure that we're, um, we're, we're keeping a good track of it. And I think any, any system that we ultimately design um, <laughs> needs to make sure we don't drop the ball on this metadata. Uh, and, and, the, and then there's managing this data. Um, yet again, more nice things from Santa Cruz. We'd love people to come over there one of these days. Um, I, and, and we have this, this huge bag of technological tricks. There, there's a couple of things that have been bandied around and are, are used in um, uh, GA4, GH, and other similar systems of Hadoop and Spark for local data access. Um, people, of course, getting files via FTP and these days S3. Um, uh, remote procedure call systems, Avro protocol buffers, Thrift. I don't know if anybody's actually using Thrift in this space, but the first two are used. Um, in fact, super quick uh, note, uh, the GA4GH consortium is now sort of in the process of switching over from Avro to um, uh, protocol buffers for its uh, representation. So that's, that's a little bit of an interesting one. Um, I'm going to say classic REST web APIs, but honestly, uh, there's kind of a, these two particular items, um, they're, they're, there's a range here. This, 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 is not, this is not tight. And of course, um, a, a nice standard RDF uh, Sparkle queries. Um, and, and I guess what I want to get at is we have these different data types. We have these different technologies. Um, we don't have to pick a single technology to, to deal with all of the different data. Um, it would be silly for me to try to get uh, individual reads data uh, using, I don't know, just, just, a, just a pure webby JSON REST API or RDF. I, I actually want to get at reads via either a very efficient RPC or just simply a, a local computation scheme. Um, but the data that, that uh, clinicians are interested in, variants, metadata, and the way to integrate it, um, I think uh, web REST APIs and RDF are, are, are the way to go, and we need to not forget that. Um, so the, the GA4GH, the, the Global Alliance for Genomics Health um, API, um, it really does want to serve all, all of the different data. There are various task teams assigned to, to each thing. Um, and uh, the, the different parts of the API use different um, paradigms for sending out that data. Um, again, for reads, um, there's, there's very much the idea that we need, to uh, we need to get to the point where we can stream data using some sort of RPC scheme, whether it's a binary Avro or a binary protocol buffers uh, method. Um, and for other kinds of data, we want kind of more of a, a restful endpoint. I ask a simple question, I get a small json answer, and I'm happy. And uh, actually, in one case, there is um, RDF in, in GA4GH already, the genotype to phenotype API. Um, uh, it does use RDF at its core, but as, as of its cur the current version, it doesn't really um, expose the full Sparkle query language to, to the end user. It, it kind of, uh, it forces the end user to specify the query in, in kind of a um, domain-specific JSON-y request object that then gets translated to RDF um, and the implementation uh, uses an, an, an RDF, a, a triple store database uh, to get out this knowledge. I, I think this is one of those points where there's an opportunity that we could say it's really okay for us to say we can we can issue a Sparkle query and still be within, you know, GA4 GH land. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that just uh, this slide kind of restates my, my last point that uh, we want. I th I think GA4 GH would be well served by making sure that we use the proper technology, the proper way of accessing data for for the proper scale of data. Um, and um, the key part here is the references, what, what, we're, what we're talking about in this room, what, what a lot of people here are concerned with. Um, there's the, the graph reference idea. Um, uh, there, so I had written kind of an initial 
very simple-minded implementation of, of the graph reference um, uh, on, on a modified GA4GH server. I am not convinced that that this is the uh, ultimate direction yet. I, I would love to talk with uh, various people here and, uh, and see if we can come up with, with possibly a better proposal to integrate graphs into GA4GH. Um, oh yeah, and speaking of standards, I, I'm sure everybody yeah. here has seen this cartoon. Um, I'm just, I'm always afraid of, of this happening and uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I think that it's, it's good for us to discuss these things so we don't all go off and, and write yet another standard without being aware of what's there. So, yeah, I know. Um, and, and obviously generalize, again, I mean, uh, we've kind of been developing GA4GH within this, this notion of um, genomic data, DNA, but obviously there are, there are other parts to this. Um, there is an RNA part to the GA4GH API that is also pr pretty close to being fully integrated back into it. Um, and, uh, you know, we haven't even talked about proteomics, but I think a lot of the same ideas probably apply there. Um, and yeah, my, my disclaimer, I'm actually still very new at this field. I'm trying to understand um, a slightly bigger picture of what's going on. Uh, so any conceptual errors in this presentation and anything I say are mine and do not necessarily represent the views of my institute. But if you guys see me kind of wandering off into La La Land, let me know. Because... Um, uh, I am going to be doing, I am going to be proposing um, into GA4GH what we've talked about here. And uh, thanks to all the people at UCSC I work with and also to um, all of the brave people who are contributing to GA4GH. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a great goal. We need to get there, uh, hopefully in less than 10 years. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you all. Uh, and there's the banana slug, which is, of course, the symbol of uh, uh, University of California, Santa Cruz. Thank you. Thank you very much.